was a warm Saturday in May. Western District was having its camporee. From Troop 28's campsite came the sounds of vigorous physical activity and the joyous shouts of men and boys working and playing together. Come on, you guys. The inspectors will be here any minute. Henderson, tighten up those ropes. Kaluchi, you wash this pot. Yes, sir. Well, wash it again. We're not having a fire sale this morning. Where's the water for the macaroni, Schultz? Don't you think those inspectors might wonder how come it's noon and nobody's cooking? Relax, buddy. It'll come out all right. What? Oh, hi, Ben. Come on over to my place and relax a minute. Relax? Are you kidding? We're going to be inspected any minute. Thanks, but I can't come now. The troop looks fine, Ron. Really. Come on over. You don't have to be here every minute. Come on. Oh, uh, okay. Gee, your troop looks great, Ben. What time did the inspectors hit you? Oh, they haven't been here yet. What? And you're just taking it easy? I guess that's the difference between you and me, Ron. What's that? Well, you act as if that's you about to get inspected over there instead of a scout troop. Well, gosh, it is me in a way. I want my boys to win, and I certainly want to do everything I can to help them. Don't you think I want my boys to win, too? Well, sure you do. But you don't see me out there whipping them into shape, do you, buddy? Well, you don't have to, Ben. Your boys are trained. My kids Your are kids are just as well trained as mine are, Rod. Maybe better. You just don't trust them, that's all. What? Think about it a minute. Look at the way you have them set up camp. Do you always set up that way? Sure we do. Works fine. But how can your patrols work if they don't camp by themselves? Don't they automatically look to you for leadership? Oh, come on, Ben. And I'll bet you plan the menus for this weekend, right? Well, sure. Where'd you get the menus? Scoutmaster's handbook, mostly. Right. And you're the only guy in the troop who can read? Well, I... Just now, I saw you chewing out a boy about a dirty pot. Doesn't that boy have a patrol leader? Well, sure, and that pot's a perfect example of his leadership. Is that it? Or is it that you don't really expect him to lead? Or want him to? What? Come on, Rod. I want to show you something. Well, you're not making much sense, but you make a good cup. See that patrol over there? Holy smoke, Ben, there's the inspectors. Sure. Aren't you going over? Why? They can find me if they want me. The point I'm trying to make is that I haven't spoken to anybody in that patrol since last night except to say good morning. They're doing this inspection on their own. And for all I know, they're falling on their faces. Don't you care? About inspection? No. If they want to win, they know what they have to do. If they need help, they know where to find me. What I do care about is whether they learn to do things like this on their own. I'm not a babysitter. Hey, what's with the calisthenics? You guys on a fitness kick? Nothing out of the ordinary. Just this patrol, and they're going hot and heavy. Something the patrol leader dreamed up with help from Charlie. He's going out for track. Ben, you act like you don't really have much to do. For instance, what'd you do this morning around here? Well, let's see. I got up, shaved, and took the raccoon's invitation to breakfast. They had some questions about skill awards. And then I had a session with my senior patrol leader so he'd know what has to happen today. Then two guys in the Raven Patrol had a big fight about whether the eggs should be scrambled or hard-boiled, and I spent about 20 minutes getting them back in shape. You mean the patrol leader couldn't handle it? All oh, right, I get the needle. You know, I think the hardest thing about the patrol method is knowing when to step in. I thought that was a time to step in, and I did. I hope I did right. Let's see. Then I spent about an hour with a meek little tenderfoot showing him how to use a compass. You teach skills like that? Actually, I don't do much skill teaching except to boy leaders, but this little kid has no father at home, and I try to spend some time with him when I can. Gee, I don't have time for things like that. I know you don't. You're too busy being the great leader to everybody. Boy, are you giving me a hard time today. If it wasn't for your hospitality, I'd go sit in somebody else's tent. No, you wouldn't. If I hadn't dragged you away from your sight, you'd still be over there beating those kids into the ground. Let me read you what Baden Powell says. You know, he's the fellow who started this business. 
The object of the patrol system is mainly to give real responsibility to as many of the boys as possible with a view to developing their character. Hmm. Makes sense. The patrol system leads each boy to see that he has some individual responsibility for the good of his patrol. The main object is not so much saving the scoutmaster trouble as to give responsibility to the boy. To get first-class results, you have to give the boy leaders real free-handed responsibility. If you only give partial responsibility, you will only get partial results. Mm, that's me, friend. Partial results. <laughs> I guess you're right. Hey, it's late. I gotta get back to my troop. Rod, do your kids a favor when you get back, huh? What's that, teacher? Go sit in your tent. What's this, fellas? We're making a tripod for our pots and pans. Oh, good idea. Nice going, guys. Jerry, could I see you a moment? Okay, Mr. Gibson. Well, Mr. Senior Patrol Leader, how did we do an inspection? I guess we did okay, but they didn't like the way we have the tents lined up. They said it wasn't by patrol. Hmm. Guess we'd better have a patrol leader's meeting. Fellas, would you rather put your tents up by patrol the way they do it in the other troops? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yes, sir. All right, now, now let's see. No, you fellas work it out with Jerry and rearrange them if you want to. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Jerry, have the patrol leaders report to you when they're all cleaned up from lunch. Then you check them out. Aren't you going to? No, I, uh, well, I, I have a very important meeting. Yes, it was at the spring campery when Scoutmaster Rod Gibson first began to understand what is meant by the patrol method. Slowly but surely, wherever he was, even at work, when he thought about the truth, he found himself thinking how he might make the patrol method work better. Spring became summer and summer drifted into fall, and winter came in its turn. And when spring came around again, there was a familiar sight out on a certain field. Scoutmaster Palmer, you're working too hard. Oh, hello, Rod. <laughs> How are you doing? Fine. Got time to chat? With you, anytime. Let's go. Here, Ben. Sit in my chair. Your chair? You use this? You bet I do. You know, Ben, I had planned to resign right after last year's camporee. I didn't know that. Sure. I didn't feel I was getting anywhere with the troop. It had become a real grind. Then you came along and showed me the way you operate and talked me into trying it, and I did. Well, I hate to admit it, but you were right. I never had really trusted my boys. Ben, I never had any idea what these kids could do until I really gave them a chance to. And here I was the guy who had been holding them back all that time. It's hard work, this patrol method, but it sure pays off. Gee, I'm sure glad this has worked out for you, Rod. But now that you've got the patrol method under control, uh, there are a few other things you want to learn. For instance, did you oh. know...